guys, what's up? It is the end of the day. It was a very long day for me today, and I just got out of the shower after the gym, and I'm just uh, wanted to share with you all a little a little newbie here in my skincare routine that's coming on in, sort of an empty to empty to open transition, <laughs> an E to O transition. All right, I'll do an empties video at the end of uh, at the end of spring before summer, so you guys can see all the stuff I've used up. Um, so stay tuned for that. But um, today, um, you know, I uh, wanted to update you guys a little bit. I have, uh, you know, I love this Hotelabo Super Plumping Gel Cream. It's available here in the U.S. You can get it at like Target. Um, you've seen me use this in my skincare routines, the humectant. I use it twice a day. Um, underneath my moisturizer applied to a wet face. It just kind of gloms on to some of that water and slows down transepidermal water loss. It's not a moisturizer per se, it's a humectant. So it kind of needs something a little bit more occlusive over it. Um, otherwise the, the water content in, in here will evaporate out and just kind of dry out your face a little bit potentially. Not really do the job of a moisturizer. But as you can see, I have basically hit hit rock bottom on this bad boy. And I, I realized that we, that we were coming to an end here with it. And over the past few weeks or so, I've been sneaking in at night, doing him in the daytime, and sneaking in at night the Hotelabo Perfect Gel um, that, um, I have two jars of this. Um, viewers have sent this to me, so you guys must want me to talk about it. You must really like like the gold jar. So I've been giving this a whirl at nighttime, and I thought I would share with you all my thoughts, compare and contrast here. Um, and I just, you know, obviously got out of the shower I take my makeup off in my sh in the shower using currently I'm using the Neutrogena uh, fragrance free Hydro Boost cleansing lotion and it's working quite well uh, so that's also a little update uh, but anyways I take my makeup off in the shower and then to a wet face in the shower okay uh, standing outside of the outside of the direction of water flow I smack the sheet mask on immediately that way we just kind of pretend we're still in the shower all right we've got a little see I'm dripping here we've got a little uh we've got a little wet wrap therapy here but um so i went ahead and did that just so i could come out here and talk to you guys uh in a seated fashion but this one's a slightly different consistency it's a little bit more um it's a little less thick okay here i'll just show you here on my finger a little dab i mean it's pretty thick this is what i would call a semi semi occlusive semi-occlusive hydrating gel humectant okay and so you can see it goes on my hand here quite you know colorless and it's, it goes on as a nice thin film tiny bit left this is a lot thicker i'm giving you guys the middle finger sorry this 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 channel still rated g um this one's a little thicker it doesn't it's not going to fall fall off of my finger uh it just has less water content okay but overall, they're very overall they're very similar. I mean, they're really it's it's really just you know apple and apple here. They're they're pretty much identical. And so I was trying to figure out what exactly it is about the one in the gold pot you guys like love so much. I've really been enjoying it, just using it at nighttime. But now that I'm done with the other one, I'm probably going to continue using it during the day. So I'll just show you how they go on here. Um, both of these are you know of course fragrance free. And they have uh, three different kind of types of hyaluronic acid, which, you know, people get all excited about having different sizes and shapes of hyaluronic acid. And ew, it can penetrate a little bit more deeply. No, it really, it's just, it's just like having different size particles in your, in your jello jiggler. I mean, it's just more stuff to kind of hold on to water. It's not really going to penetrate your skin. I mean, hello, it's called a barrier. Um, okay, so we're just going to peel this off. But yeah, they both have, they both have hyaluronic acid. Oh, just dab it in. This is one of the Hotelabo sheet masks, by the way. These are one of the few sheet masks I actually recommend because uh, they're just fragrance free. All they are really is just, just a little bit of of light moisturizer and <laughs> on a piece of tissue. Um, they're phenomenal. But anyway, we're just gonna dab that in. And now to a wet face, I will show you guys. I'll just do, do a little comparison here. And I just put it on to the wet face and I'm just making like a gelatin, like a gelatin coating on here. See, this is just slowing down that water loss a little bit more and kind of giving a brightening effect. And the super plumping gel cream 
here we have a little bit left here. The Super Plumping Gel Cream pretty much looks identical, um, you know, and you can kind of do the same thing. Uh, and then I just brush it on over my face, a little bit down, down the sides of the neck. In addition to having the hyaluronic acid, both of these guys have ceramide in them. They have a, a ceramide in them as well. Ceramides applied to the surface of the skin can can help the skin uh, barrier restore itself a little bit better, as I've said in many of my other videos. And uh, for people with who are prone to dry skin and eczema, they're they're a very helpful addition in a moisturizer. So both both forms of this have it in there. All right, now I'm just going to seal in that humectant with. A, I'm going to put a little bit of this ultimate nourishing rice spa mask that I've been loving. This is a this is basically a lotion. Okay, those are those are semi occlusive gels. This is a lotion. A lotion is a slightly waterier version of a cream, and a lotion is a thicker version of a of like a a serum. Serums are just a watery lotion basically. And a gel, a gel cream is, is kind of like a kind of like a lotion that's semi-solid and uh, semi-occlusive. All just kind of different different amounts of thick and thin. It's really all they are. I mean it's not that they allow pen stuff to penetrate better or anything like that. Love both of these, they're fragrance free. So, so look at that, I can just wipe them over my eyes and not a problem there whatsoever. Um, and this, you know, is good enough that I'm done with my, my moisturizer. I'm just gonna let it on, dry on there before I put my tretinoin on top to the dry moisturized face. Um, and I'll just chit chat with you guys a little bit about the differences between these two. And ugh. so they both have the hyaluronic acid binding up the water. They both have ceramides, which can kind of help kickstart some of the skin barrier repair, theoretically. Um, ceramides are a very important part of our natural skin barrier, and they become deficient um, in the skin barrier when our skin is dry or irritated from too many cosmetics or too many, too many harsh products. Uh, people with eczema can have a deficiency and do often have a deficiency in ceramides. And as we get older, wiser, uh, the ceramide content in our skin, skin barrier starts to decline, predisposing to dryness. And putting, putting that on there can be very helpful. These also contain um, acrylates. Um, and so that's kind of why you can see I, I look a little brighter, right? <laughs> just in putting them on. It's just scattering light, okay? And they're, they're acrylamides and acrylates polymers that by themselves are actually kind of emollient so they soften the edges of the skin cells and uh, they scatter light they you know they reflect and scatter light off the surface of our face so they they kind of can camouflage wrinkles they're not getting rid of wrinkles um, they're not you know undoing the damage of, of sun damage but they're they're imparting a brightening effect just almost by an optical illusion but they're helping the skin bearer at the same time all right so that's why I really like using these underneath a moisturizer underneath either a moisturizer and cream like the CeraVe cream in the tub that I typically use or this or this Causerex um, fragrance free uh, lotion they're both fantastic there is a major difference however between the super plumping gel cream and the uh, perfect gel and that is in the preservatives that they contain the super plumping gel cream at least what you can get here in the US um, has methyl isothiazinolone in it, which is a preservative, and it also has iodyl propanyl butyl carbamate, another preservative. Both are preservatives, they're safe, they're not dangerous, but there is a chance with long-term use of developing allergic contact dermatitis. That can happen to any ingredient, all right? But and the most common offender in cosmetics is fragrance, all right? Neither of these have fragrance in them. Preservatives like methyl isothiazinolone are increasingly, however, becoming more and more common. So this one has methyl isothiazinolone in it, as well as iodopropyl butyl carbamate, which is another preservative that is a little bit lower tier as far as um, incidences, um, lower tier than methyl, methyl isothiazinolone, but both, there's a chance of that. This has both of them in there, um, whereas this one does not, all right? So the preservatives in this um, are a little bit uh, lower incidences of allergic contact dermatitis in comparison to the super plumping gel cream, but otherwise they're pretty much identical. 
So I would say if you have a sensitivity or a confirmed or a patch test confirmed allergy to methyl isothiazinolone, obviously this one is off the table for you. But this one um, is is a is a is a logical and safe choice. Likewise, the the Neutrogena Hydro Boost um, Extra Dry Sensitive Skin, the fragrance free one, is also a a fine choice. It too, um, I've, I'm almost certain unless they change it around on me, I haven't checked in a while, is methyl isothiazinolone free. So if you are sensitive to those two preservatives, then, then those, would be, those would be decent choices for you. But both contain parabens. And, you know, I've said on here before, parabens are more than fine. Uh, they're not that common as far as um, allergic contact dermatitis. And they're pretty important in skincare products, particularly water-based things like watery gels, gel humectants. Um, our skincare products rely on the presence of preservatives for safety to you, the user. You know, there are a variety of bacteria that don't belong on our skin and that thrive in water in watery environments. And, you know, namely Pseudomonas. And so they're important ingredients. You know, there, there's a trend now to demonize certain, certain ingredients and say things like, you know, I, it's, it's my pet peeve. I hate it when, I hate it when companies try and talk down to you as the consumer and be like, we only use ingredients that you can pronounce, blah, 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 blah. Like lavender. Well, you know, lavender is, is likely to cause allergic contact dermatitis. It's a flower. It doesn't belong on your face. It smells nice, uh, but it, it has no role in skincare, all right? But parabens, however, you know, I don't understand where it is, why it is that they focus in on, on parabens and paraben-free and starting this paraben phobia, you know, like that it's an endocrine disruptor or whatever. They take small observations in lab-based studies and they extrapolate them in ways that are not relevant, okay? So to sell you something, basically, to sell you a product, they, they extrapolate small scientific lab-based studies that have no relevance to human to humans all right we have we've been using parabens in skincare for eons with no reported adverse effects to human health they're present in topical medications that have a track record of treating skin cancers not causing them they're present in you know many things and there are no no adverse effects to human health i mean we have a lot a, a lot of a lot of history using these with no problem, all right? The problem ingredients that we see in dermatology clinics and in the medical literature are, as far as cosmetic products, are fragrance. And that's the one thing that you, you should avoid. So um, I love the Hotelabo products because they are pretty much all fragrance free. I've yet to find a Hotelabo product that snuck, snuck even, even some flower water in there. So I love them in that regard. They're really phenomenal. And I think in Japan, they don't use methyl isothiazinolone in any of their products. I think they pretty much just stick to parabens. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but um, these are phenomenal. Their sheet masks are phenomenal. Face wash, cleansing oil. I have not had a bad hot lava product yet. The sunscreen I am uh, absolutely loving. I reviewed it for you guys a while back. That sunscreen and this, I mean, these, these are must-haves. I do wish they were not in jar packaging, not because I have like any reservations about dipping my finger in there. Like I said, the preservatives in this keep everything fine. Um, and I, you know, always wash my hands before putting in there. I just, I don't like the jar packaging because I find it's, it's, it's arduous to get in and out of. I prefer, I prefer a pump or something like that. That. Um, I'm sure in Japan they they have it in you know other forms, but um, I wish it wasn't in the jar. But so be it. Overall, though, as far as how the two compare, aside from that subtle difference in the preservative, they're pretty much identical. And you know, as I mentioned, I have two jars of the Perfect Gel, so I'm going to use this one up that I'm currently using, and I'll move on to the next jar. Um, you know, and then I'll probably go back to the Super Plumping Gel Cream because I can get it here, you know, in Target or whatever, pretty easily. I don't know, you know, but to me, they're they're the same. I mean, if you're using one and you like it, just stick with it. I mean, to me, they're the same. They don't really there's nothing really that jumps out 
to me as, as being super different. I want to try some of the Hotelabo. Hotelabo has a line of Alpha Arbutin products that I also want to try. Comment below on if you have used those. Alpha Arbutin, as I mentioned before, is a precursor hydroquinone and, you know, a natural derivative of hydroquinone and can have a brightening effect. So I kind of want to try some of their, some of their brightening line. I imagine they do it well. Hotelabo, double two thumbs up it's an undersung you know i don't find people making that many hotelabo videos on youtube i don't really see that many ads for hotelabo or anything like that maybe it's just not that popular in the u.s i think i'm sure in japan it's kind of like your neutrogena or something and it's probably all over the place but um there's there they definitely need to infiltrate our market more they're really fantastic i think they put us they they put you know a lot of the american skincare and the european skincare to shame, at least as far as a drugstore product. European products, a lot of them have have a lot of fragrance, particularly a lot of the French-based um, skincare products. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them do. And you know, many of the Korean Korean skincare products also have fragrance. Um, Cosrx is Korean, and I'm liking it. It's fragrance-free, but you got to be careful. The other comment that I'll make, last year I reviewed for you all the Belief Aqua Balm. Are people still using that thing? I haven't heard about it in a while. Um, this, or, or the Super Plumping Gel Cream, they're far better than that thing. That thing, you know, it was fine, I liked it, but it was really just just jelly, jelly fragrance. It had a lot of fragrance in it. So it's not a good one at all. These are much better, a much better choice. Um, but you heard about that and people were raving about that far more than this. And this is better, you know, these are better the hot lava one so yeah that's my opinion for whatever it's worth but but yeah that's my opinion on that um but anyways oh while i was in the gym this is just a little story time for you guys because I, I i felt found this odd and want to tell somebody so why not tell my little black box um while i was in the gym there was um, a man and a woman in there and i gleaned very early on from their conversation that she was paying him to train her like he was a trainer i mean you could tell by looking at him he's like or, you know, um, like he lifts a lot of weights. And, you know, I gleaned early on from their conversation that she was paying him to train her. But they did not do a single exercise the entire time she, she was in there. They were in there along with me for at least an hour. Um, I think they were in there the entire time I was in there, and I was in there over an hour. They were in there, and they didn't, she did not do a single exercise, nor did he. There was no exercising going on. Um, and all they did was talk the entire time. The, the, you know, their, their muscles of mastication were the only thing that, that were moving. You know, they, they were talking. They were not exercising at all. There was no, their conversation, I could hear their conversation because they were speaking quite loudly, um, which is kind of annoying. You know, in the gym, you kind of want to use your indoor voices. They definitely were not using indoor voices. They were talking about everything you can imagine you know just out and about political events you know relationships with other people that they knew friends acquaintances Susie Q in the office and what she wore and why she shouldn't have worn it no talk about you know what it, how's your diet going nothing like that and so I'm thinking to myself is she actually paying him to to train her because I see no training going on you know they're just she's kind of paying him to vent and if that's the case I don't know it's called a coffee shop why don't you go there I'm slightly annoyed by by the whole occurrence but I don't know maybe that's that's probably cheaper than therapy though you know than seeing a seeing a counselor or something to just kind of vent about about office life so I can't I can't fault fault her for that and you know it was just me in there so you know whatever who am I to who am I to get in the way of get in the way of lively conversation anyways guys like I said loving the perfect gel hope you guys uh like this review of it and if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye